Well, good morning. Wesley and I say hi. Say hi, Wesley. Hi. Well, today is about sewer smells in your building or your home. Now, it's very something that's very technical and very hard to figure out. Number one, you should have years of experience. Number two, if you hire someone to find these leak, broken pipe, whatever's wrong in your home or in a commercial building, first of all, you call several plumbing shops. You find out their credentials. You say, okay, give me a list of two or three people that you have helped and for a reasonable cost because it can be very expensive. Now, when you're a maintenance plumber, you're getting paid by the hour. So your goal is, you know, to find this. If you, you know, you have to have time. So management's got to give you time to find these leaks, these, the smell. There's a smell for a reason. Something's wrong. Don't shrug it off. You're talking about methane gas. You're talking about dying. That's why they have plumbing license and plumbing laws or, well, regulations. So wise up and hire the right person. Now, in my book, and I'll go over it again because this is Commercial Plumbing Maintenance, Amazon.com. I discuss in here about green techniques. Okay, my dog wants to go sit down. Okay, now green techniques basically means using non-toxic type of chemicals and devices and stuff that won't add more problems to your problems. So we can go here to page. Let's see here. What page is this on? Oh, let's see. I put it on this page. I marked the page. On page 66 of the book, it talks about non-restricted chemicals and how I make a list of everything that I use. Now, there's smoke bombs. There's scent detectors. There's dye. There's cameras. There's common sense. There's years of practice. You know, you go into a building and you look at the, the house. Let's say house because those are, you know, I look at homes as being very simple because I'm a commercial plumbing plumber. So homes, you go in and you look, you evaluate the situation. Let's say you're in the, 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 the kitchen and they say, well, I'm getting a lot of smells. All right, sometimes you don't necessarily even need to do a smoke bomb or a scent detector and you don't want some company ripping you off. You go in there, the plumber takes a look, years of experience, he says, wow, I can see that the P-trap's got too long of an arm. Pe people sometimes, you know, there's a restriction between the P-trap. There's a regulation, how far it should be down from the top to the weir of the trap, okay? So there's a regulation for that. You've got universal code, the state code, all these codes, but if you know your code, and as a commercial plumber, you should. And that's why this book is important, because you should already know this stuff. I don't want to tell you about that. That, You know, go to the internet, and they'll, they'll give you a bunch of crap, and they'll tell you all these little stories. But this book will give you a better idea. And if you're a commercial plumber, maintenance, and you want more experience, or you're a plumber, and you're going to go into maintenance, this book gives you more ideas. It tells you, you know, in a sense of what you should look for. All right, so I, I go into this, this kitchen. I look at it and I see number one, okay, there's a potential the P-trap itself is too far. What that means is the water's going down and it's sucking the water out of the P-trap because the P-trap's supposed to hold the water. So a lot of people do their own kitchen and they'll remodel and they don't know what the hell they're doing and they think, oh, it works, it goes, shit goes downhill and I get paid on my weekends or whatever. I get paid, I go have a good time and I've saved a lot of money. Well, that's not the answer, my friends. You need to know what you're doing. So, you know, go buy a code book. Look it up on the internet. There's a lot of internet stuff. Go to your city and state, look up the codes. And if you're gonna do self-installation. And if not, don't get ripped off by a plumber because you should be able to walk in and see that immediately. You shouldn't have to do all these smoke tests and bomb tests. Once you fix that P-trap problem, you're fine. Okay, another problem could have been, you look into the, to the wall and you see the fittings are loose. All right, you tighten up the fittings. Uh, you know, these are simple things. Now, if, if, you, if it still smells, well, the guy will come back and now you got to do a smoke test. Okay, so first you, and then you shouldn't be charged, you know, at least for those hour or two, in my mind, you shouldn't be charged. That should be go, go back to the next hour or two that you're going to spend. 
doing a smoke bomb test or, you know, a dye test or whatever you may need to do for that kitchen. And it goes on and on. Floor drains. Floor drains dry up. If you're in a, a, a mechanical room, you've been gone a month or something, or in your in your basement, and you've been gone, and that that floor drain doesn't get water in it because the air conditioning system isn't draining into it, giving it water during the summer, or you don't have uh, something else dripping into it. The P-trap dries up. Well, boom, you got smell of sewer. Guess what? Add water, and you should add water all the time. These are just simple things. But when you get into commercial buildings, you're talking more serious stuff. You're talking about lengths of pipe, you know, that go on for miles. So you need to know what you're doing. You need to know where to cap it off. You need to know where to do the smoke test, not to be, you know, inter putting all these chemicals into the, into the, um, the patients. Uh, if it's a hotel, if it's, uh, um, you know, condominiums, if it's... Uh, uh, hospital especially, you need to isolate it or you're not going to interfere and not use none, uh, you know, non-restricted chemicals. I talked about restricted chemicals and non-restricted chemicals in my book and what that means and how important it is to not be using all these chemicals that people buy over the hardwood store, hardware store. So I'm trying to make this short, but I'm trying to let you understand that, you know, hire a plumber that can give your credentials. Don't go out and hire the local plumber down the street because if you've got a serious smell that you've had it and you know it shouldn't be there, especially in your bedroom or, you know, uh, you don't want to go to sleep and have that gas, you know, and if it's serious methane gas, you're going to wake up dead. So, you know, be careful. Um, call the right plumber, not just anyone. And I always say call a union plumber. I know that there's some good residential plumbers out there, but you know, I, I just have had, ex working for the government, I've just had experiences with non-union and union, and and just those 25 years, I can tell you that a union plumber's just got better skills. So look for a union plumbing shop, you know, even with them though, check their credentials, make sure that they've done stuff. They have automatic smoke machines now instead of smoke bombs. They have cameras that can go down and detect stuff. I mean, but you know, do you always need all this stuff? Or can that plumber just evaluate it with his years of experience and say, you know what? I can isolate it here to one floor. And I can tell you, this is what we need to do not to not go crazy here and spend you a fortune to fix this. So hiring the right plumber will do it. And buying this book, you guys, commercial plumber guys, thank you. Have another day, another video. Goodbye.